Hi everyone, my name is Rick Warwood. I'm here today to do a fly tying video for Hook for Life fly fishing. Uh, the fly we're going to do today is called a slammer, a steelhead slammer. It's a, uh, it was first shown to me as a west coast pattern, but uh, we brought it to the Great Lakes region and uh, it's been a very successful and one of my actual top go-to type flies. This particular fly that we're going to tie I want you to, to look at this more or less as a pattern um, that you don't have to specifically tie it the way I'm tying it as far as the color sequences. You can change it around, you can use black, you can use purple, you can use pink, you can just mix them up. You can, uh, if you want to tie it as a minnow pattern and tie it pure white, that's fine too. So, so look at it more as just the style or the materials that you will need to tie this pattern, but change it up as you, as you uh, wish. Uh, I thought first what we'd do is we'd go through some of the materials that we're going to be um, using. Uh, the tubes that we'll be using today are the Canadian tube fly tubes. Um, as you can see, they, came, they come in a multitude of different colors and also they come in different sizes. Uh, once the fly is constructed, what you'll actually do is um, put a little piece of junction tube and that's where you're going to slip your knot uh, for your, your hook setup because it's a tube fly. And again, uh, Canadian Tube Fly sells uh, different types of junction tubing. And the kind of the neat thing is this actually comes in different colors. So you can match or, or mismatch whatever you want to do uh, your tube. The main body material will be egret sparkle film. Um, and as you can see, it comes in different, different colors. Um, I have a red, a blue, and a pink one. We'll be using the pink one today. This actual material actually has um, a sticky back and when you pull away the cellophane it you actually have a sticky back so that can actually be wrapped on the tubing. We'll be putting a tail or a butt section in of uh, dyed guinea fowl and a piece of ostrich in the back. We'll have a wing of um, purple zonker, it's a rabbit. Over top of that, we'll put some crystal flash in purple. I like to, to actually match the wing to the flash, but if you want to change it around, again, that's kind of up to you. Uh, we'll actually have a throat of marabou. And then over top of that, to finish the fly off, again, will be the uh, dyed guinea fowl. All right, so let's get started tying this fly. Um, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually flare the tubing and you're going to flare it at the front and the back so you're going to cut off what you uh, the, the length that you want I'm using about a one inch length of tubing so in order to flare it all you do is you use a lighter and then just rotate it and hold it low to the flame and you'll see it to actually start to flare and then just cut it to length, reverse it, and flare the other side. So, start your thread at the rear, and you want to leave a little space at the rear of the fly, enough so that you can, it allows you enough space to pull up the junction tube and put it over top, which you're going to need, as I mentioned earlier, um, in order to hook your, uh, your mono th and, your, and your hook through. Then take your dyed guinea fowl and just trim the edge. As you can see that I've already trimmed the butts. I normally, when I take a feather, I just pull back the material and trim either sides. Lock it in with a couple of turns. Take your hackle pliers and nice and smoothly without too much pressure start your wrap around I'm just gonna rotate that up so it's out of the way and then I just like coaxing this feather back You can use your dubbing needle and run it against the shaft and that'll help fold the feather a little bit. And 
And once you've made three or four wraps, you've got the desired amount that you want. And just grab it, wrap it around. turns and then make sure that when you actually cut the, the stem off make sure that you push your thread out of the way uh, nothing worse than cutting the thread and make sure you secure it down nice and tight and there have there you have your guinea butt section. So now I'm going to take this flex material, the sparkle flex material. As I mentioned it's stick tacky on one end and I'm going to cut a point. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to tie it in up on top with a couple of wraps. And then Leaving the thread at the butt, I'm going to take the material, I'm going to pull it nice and tight, and slowly wrap it all the way up, edge to edge, covering the tube. Like so. Just use your fingers and make sure that you've got it down there nice. Perfect. Now I'm going to take a couple of barbels of ostrich and tie them on top at the butt area, bringing that thread just a little bit forward. and make a bit of a collar here. And this just now actually covers where you started that flex material. A couple of turns, pushing your thread out of the way, get your scissor points in there. You can trim it up and make it a little cleaner. Very nice. Take your whip finish and coming forward, make about three turns and tie it off. And this being a red thread will bleed right into the material. So and at that point, if you'd like, you could add a little bit of head cement if you choose to do that. Trim it up. Clean it up a little bit if you chose. Now next, we'll take our rabbit zonker strip. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull the material at the back back just a bit here. And we're going to trim a little bit off the back. That's more for aesthetics. It's and then you want to measure it so that it's about twice as long as the shaft. Pull the material out of the way. And what I like to do with this is I actually like to pull a little bit of material off there so I'm just exposing the leather part of the zonker strip and then again trim it with a point. You might find that some of these zonker strips um, sometimes are thicker than others uh, so um, 
you don't want to tie a lot of bulk into the head section so what you can actually do is if you find that they are too thick is what I do is I wiggle my scissors in and then just sort of pull it away and then cut it off and that'll actually make it a little bit thinner and it'll actually lay in place a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to pull this down and trim this off here because I don't need it on there. I will start my thread again. And this will secure the body material. And I will tie in the wing. On top. Next we'll take our flash boo. And I've got about um, six or eight strands of flashaboo. Um, if you want to mix colors, that's another thing you could do, depending on what colors you use in the wing and the body and so on. Uh, you know, make it to your liking. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half over the thread. I'm going to bring it up on top and then make about four turns just to make sure that it's nice and secure. Now if you want to trim it up so that it meets the length of the wing that's fine. What I do is if I'm going to do that then I just kind of go back and forth so it's not perfectly straight so it kind of kind of a mismatch kind of on top of the fly itself. All right. The next thing we'll do is we'll take the marabou and as you can see I've also taken the liberty of trimming the back end of the marabou. We'll grab it at the tip, moisten it a little bit, so I have something to tie in. You can trim that up just a bit. Now the shaft on these are very thin so you have to be very careful when you start to tie them in that you don't snap them. So material out of the way. Make sure you got it nice and tight. Run your thread up and out of the way. Using your hackle pliers Make at least one full turn around, coaxing the material back a little bit. So you got one complete turn. What I find is for me that works really well is if I take my dubbing needle and I moisten it and I run it along the shaft, it'll actually help fold that material over so it'll actually tie in much easier. Pull the material back. And you can use your dubbing needle to coax material out of the way. Oops. And two or three turns. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You want to make sure that you leave yourself enough room at the head so you can put the collar on. Take your thread, run this up the side, come around. Now one of the things you can do is turn it the opposite direction and that'll actually clear it from the thread. There you go. So make a number of wraps around and then what you're going to do is wiggle the thread through and then take your, dub, your um, hackle pliers and turn them the opposite way and that actually, whoops, that'll actually clear the material away so that you can make a couple of wraps. Then again, pushing the thread out of the way, take your scissors, go into the material base and snip your thread. Pull everything back, a 
couple of turns. And we can trim up any waste material. And now the last part of the fly is just to tie in the collar. So I can just take this, and I'm just going to trim that down like this. So the last part of the fly will be putting the collar on. So we want to take the guinea fowl, and as you can see, I've actually trimmed, so it's just easier to deal with. Um, grabbing it between your thumb and index finger. Um, just pull the material up here and trim it off. And then coaxing the material around. A couple of turns. Form a nice collar. A couple of turns of thread. Making sure that I've got the shaft. Quick rotation just to have a look and see how she looks. Oh, not too bad. Nice and secure. And the thread. And there you have it, the slammer. And as I mentioned, change around the colors, makes a nice tube fly. You can adapt different colors and to suit the different conditions that you're going to be fishing. But it's certainly a great go-to fly. Thank you very much. Rick Warwood signing off.